Hey everybody, if you watched my last video, it, I did one that says I finally found my new daily driver. And let me tell you something, I'm very impressed with uh, Gecko Linux so far. It is a spin of OpenSUSE that comes with things pretty much already there that you need. Now, the other day when I was actually looking at their website, which has a lot of documentation and basically tells you that it's based on OpenSUSE and that there's a lot of things that are already included in this distribution that you don't have to do. Well, when I was going through this and kind of doing my research, I found out something else. That the same developer of Gecko Linux is also the developer behind Spiral Linux. Now, Spiral Linux is very interesting. It's based on Debian 11, but it's pre-packaged with a lot of things done out of the box. It's basically made to look more polished and just be ready to use. Now, we all know Debian is a bulletproof operating system. I'm going to have some people in the comments go, no operating system is bulletproof. But when it comes to Linux, if you go from Arch down to Debian, there's a big difference. You're going to have older packages on Debian, but they're going to be more stable. Now, what Spiral Linux features include is it's built from the Debian stable packages, but with newer hardware support pre-installed from Debian backports. And it is also easily upgradable to Debian's testing or unstable branches with just a few clicks. Optimal BTRFS sub-volume layout with ZSTD transparent compression and automatic snapper snapshots. Graphical manager for your flat pack packages. Font rendering and color theming, which is pre-configured for optimal legibility. Now, I know some people have some issues sometimes with the way fonts are rendered in Linux. This has already got that taken care of out of the box. It's got the proprietary media codecs and non-free Debian package repositories already pre-installed, so you don't have to go through that. It has broad hardware support with a wide array of proprietary firmware pre-installed, extensive printer support, optimal power management, virtual box support available out of the box. It enables ZRAM swap by default for better performance and low-end hardware. And normal users can operate and administer the system without recurring to the terminal. And this is what's most important. And I didn't point this out the other day either with Gecko, and I should have. Spiral Linux depends entirely on the Debian infrastructure. The same way Gecko Linux is entirely dependent upon the OpenSUSE structure. Basically what that means is if the developer gets hit by a car tomorrow and can no longer touch either spin, it'll still work. It's completely intact and it's completely connected to Debian so you don't have to worry about that. And then installed system can be smoothly upgraded to future Debian releases while retaining its unique Spiral Linux configuration. And then if you come down here, it says, why another Debian distro? Right here is all the flavors you can get it in. You can get it in Cinnamon, XFCE, Gnome, Plasma, Mate, Budgie, LXQT, and then you've got the Spiral Linux Builder. The one we're going to be taking a look at today is Budgie. And I'm really impressed with it. It's lightweight. It's what you would expect from a solid Debian distribution. And then if you come down to the bottom, he's got special thanks too. And then you can go back up top. And you got download, documentation, bugs, form, and news. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to zip on over to the Spiral Linux desktop. I like it. It's just a nice, subdued look. You've got a little transparency in the top panel up here. You've got a little dock down here. Now, another thing I like is to install it, you get the Calamares installer. Now, we're not going to go through all these steps. You can watch my previous video or you can watch any other video where I do an install and overview. Most of the time, I'm using the Calamares installer. This is pretty neat that it's included with a Debian distribution. But what I'm going to do here real quick is go ahead and close out of that. And yes, we're going to quit that. And then down here, you've got your file manager, you've got Firefox, settings, launch software center, and then launch synaptic package manager. Now, you get the files program for your file manager. It's lightweight, it stays out of your way, it just really makes doing your job really easy. And then of course you've got Firefox. And then on settings, you're going to notice that your settings are real familiar, especially if you use like GNOME or something like that. You've got your network, Bluetooth, and then of course your backgrounds over here. Applications, online accounts, privacy. And then of course you can do about. It says it's Spiral Linux. I've issued it two gigabytes of RAM to run. Uh, disk capacity is two gigabytes. It's based on Debian GNU Linux 11 Bullseye 64-bit. 
It's GNOME version 3.38.5. Of course, it's going to be a little older because Debian relies on older, more stable applications and desktop environments. The windowing system is X11 and of course virtualization is KVM. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to cover Spiral Linux is because when I did my video a couple days ago on me switching my daily driver over to Gecko, I had a lot of people in the comments basically say they wanted to be on something a little more stable. They understood why I was doing what I was doing and then I even had some commenters go, if you like Garuda or if you liked Arch, why are you leaving it? Just stay with what you like. That's not what I do on this channel. I got to change it up. I got to keep things fresh. If I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again, it gets kind of boring. So, But that's what you get with this. You get uh, uh, the developer that does Gecko Linux is also doing Spiral Linux and he's making it even better of a Debian experience out of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then we're going to go down here to the software center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to have to let the software catalog update itself. So that'll take just a little bit and then we can get going here. Okay. And it seems to have populated. So let's go ahead and maximize this. So it's easier for you all to see. Not a big change from other distributions you've seen. You've got your editor's picks, your recent releases. And if I remember correctly, let's go ahead and look over here. It shows the installed. Let's go back to explore. Now I want to see if I pick like GNOME clocks, you've got Debian source and FlatHub. So you've got directly from the Debian repos or you can install flat packs from the FlatHub. So that's nice to know. I always like to have a backup. Whether I'm using Art, I use whatever repositories are there. I use the AUR. I have more places than just one spot to get the applications that I need. So you get the Debian repo and you get flat packs out of the box. So let's go ahead and close that. And now I want to go down here, and here's another place you can get applications, is from Synaptic Package Manager. Now, if you're not familiar with Synaptic, it's more of a type search and then install type situation. So if I wanted to go over here and like do a search, I could type in something like OBS Studio, and I don't know if it'll show it to me. It may need to update. Nope, there it is right there. And then once OBS has shown up, you just click right here and mark for installation. And it'll tell you whatever dependencies you might need right here. Go ahead and mark those. Then you would come up here and hit apply. And then it would install it on your system. But that's pretty easy. You just come up here. You do a, a type and search. Caden Alive. We'll see if that pops up. And it's right there. You click on it. Mark for installation. And then mark the dependencies. And then you're good to go. You can install from there. So there's plenty of ways to get applications and software on Spiral Linux. So let's go ahead and close out of this. We'll go ahead and quit. We'll come up here to the menu. Accessories, you got Catfish File Search, Menu Editor, Parcelite, uh, Administration, Light DM, GTK and Greeter Settings, Synaptic we already looked at, Gthumb, Transmission for your BitTorrent, Pigeon. It does come with LibreOffice out of the box, so you don't got to download an Office Suite. Software Update, Sound Recorder, you got VLC, Pulse Audio, now I did want to see Snapper. Let's go ahead and open that up. This is where you can take a snapshot of your system. So what you'd want to do is once you get the system set up the way you wanted and you've got all your applications put into place and you're ready to just start using your OS. Once you get it all set up, I recommend you come over here, click on this little arrow and then create a snapshot and then it will walk you through it, take a snapshot of your system. So that way, should you have any issues, in the future, you can always go back to a snapshot to where your operating system was stable and everything was running well. You never know. We all make mistakes and sometimes it's nice to have that backup in case we do. And then you've got system tools. You also got a GW package manager. Now, if you open this up, if you're online and you download uh, an application you want to use that you can't find on the repositories on flat packs or even in synaptic package manager you can download a debian package for it online go ahead and download it once it's downloaded you just open up your files go to your downloads right click on it and it'll say open with open with gw package manager and the package manager will install it so we'll close out of that come down here system and then of course utilities, which has your disks, calculator, things like that. Now system monitor, let's go ahead and open that up. Let's see what kind of resources we're using. Right now we're at about 1.6 gigabytes running. 
Now, once you install this, there will be less resources used in your RAM for the simple fact that it'll be installed on bare metal and you won't have to worry about any of the operating system running in RAM in the background. It's still not too bad. It's not as heavy as a lot of other distributions I've looked at, so, and it's stable. And we come back over here, you finish up with utilities and we got terminal. Let's go ahead and run a top in terminal and see what it is compared to what we were looking at a while ago. See right here, top is gonna show you what the operating system in and of itself is actually using, which is about 988 megabytes. So that's not too bad. So that's a quick look at Spiral Linux. Like I said, it's coming from the same developer that delivers you Gecko Linux, which is a solid distribution and is now my daily driver. If you guys wanna take a look at it, I'll make sure to include a link in the description below where you can download it. And if you do take a look at it, or if you've got any questions about what I put in this video, or you got any suggestions, please put those in the comments below. I love getting feedback from everybody. Do me a quick favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that I produce, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, zipping over and throwing us a donation on PayPal, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.